Hey guys, what's going on? Tom here with another tutorial type thing, and as you can probably see uh, from the title, hopefully you can, I'm going to teach you guys how to make a portal uh, from the game portal. That's kind of what I'm basing it off of. I'm also adding my little, like, flare uh, slash touch to it. So, yeah, it's going to be based off of portal, and I did see a few tutorials online, and I've concluded that they all suck. So... Maybe, let's make a tutorial right. I'll show you guys how to make a good looking portal not like downloading stock footage from the actual game doesn't look good um, So I'm gonna teach you guys like the main elements and how to uh, do that. So Let's make a new composition. Um, I use 1920 by 1080. I don't care what resolution you use. Let's go 30 frames per second and I think about five seconds of animation should be good now this effect is mostly going to use like um, displacement maps and solids and stuff like that. So you may learn, you know, one or two new things. So uh, let's make a new solid, control Y. Um, pick whatever color you want. I'm going to use either a uh, blue or orange because that's the colors of portal. I'm going to use an orange-ish. So pick your shade. Uh, you can base it off of the actual game. doesn't matter. And there we go. We got our solid. Um, I'm going to make a mask, a ellipse mask. Try to make it look like an oval, something like that. Looks pretty good. Then you can kind of reposition it and put it in the center-ish of your frame. So once you have uh, this, you're pretty good. Um, just feather. Try to feather it out like five pixels. Get a bit of a soft edge. So you see soft edge. Pretty cool. And right now it looks really, really bad. So let's add a bunch of detail to it. First, let's do texture. So put in some fractal noise. Bam. And it's already looking pretty weird. So you can change the uh, noise type to whatever you want. Uh, blocks look pretty cool. Although I'm pretty sure um, Portal uses something that looks more like either spline or uh, linear. I'm going to be using spline because I think it looks cool. And, I, and the black and white colors default if you want you can change that um, high definition or not we, we can use HDR high dynamic range um, just, so we get a better look and contrast which by the way uh, we should bring up to like 125 make that look a bit darker and don't just copy the numbers I put in do whatever uh, you're trying to get in your effect and the only thing you should really change is the opacity uh, what should we do? Maybe like a 30? Uh, but that's a bit soft. Uh, let's do a 40. That, that's pretty good. So you see we get a bit of the texture, but we also have some of our orange. Awesome. And you can actually uh, set the evolution to this, which is kind of like the change of the texture. Which I think is pretty cool. So let's keyframe that. Hit keyframe there. And then over 2 or 5 seconds. What did we choose? I think it was 5 seconds. We'll have it do four rotations, so... Okay, let's RAM preview that, see how that looks. And it should look like it's doing this, like, weird slow ripple thing. Okay, that looks... that looks decent. That looks solid. Huh, yeah, bad jokes. So, yeah, I do that. Um... Okay, that's pretty good. I think the opacity and everything's great. You can change the blending mode if you want, if you don't want to have a certain color, but... I'm going to keep it on, uh, not none. I'm going to keep it on normal. So, yeah. So now that we have some of the texture, let's try to get the shape. Obviously, it looks way too ovally. So, let's uh, do some edge stuff. So, go to roughen edges and plop that on there. And if you guys haven't used roughen edges, what it does is, as you see, we already kind of have a distorted edge over here. Which is kind of what it does. So what we're going to do is first we're going to set the border to like 25, something with more significant rippling. So we can actually kind of see what's going on. And there's a few different um, edge type presets. You got Ruffin. The only other ones I would recommend are either Rusty, which uh, gives us more like faded look. Or Spiky, which you know, Spike. I think I might use Spiky because it looks pretty cool. Uh, photocopy looks horrible. Don't even... And cuts pretty standard. So what we're going to use is we're going to use spiky. Because that looks really, really cool. You got these like little tendrils coming out. And I really like the look. So what we're going to do is we're going to bump up that border to like 50. 
Okay, maybe that's a bit too much. Uh, 35. That's good. And uh, you can change the complexity to add more or less tendrils. If you go to 10, you get a pretty ridiculous look, which actually, that may be what you want. I don't know. Complexity 1 looks pretty good. I'm going to go with 2, which is what it was at. I would recommend anywhere between uh, 2 and 4. Uh, looks solid. Okay. And like the other things, we can actually change the evolution on this too. So keyframe your evolution. And over five seconds, we're going to have this do four cycles. So we got like some tendrils breaking off, some tendrils moving. We'll RAM preview a bit of it. Okay, let's play that. And you can always play with the evolution speed if you want your portal to be more active or less active. I mean, really, whatever you want. You can go into detail with your evolution. You can cycle the same one, which actually might be a good idea. So let's cycle that. So now we should get the exact same thing over and over. Cool. And the only other thing I will change is the edges look a bit too sharp. So go to your edge sharpness and put it down to like 0.6. And you see it kind of fades out kind of like a feather would. Maybe 0.5 looks a bit better. Oh, whoops. Make sure you're in the right section. There you go. 0.5. Awesome. So now if we ran preview, we have decent texturing. I won't say the best. Uh, we have decent uh, tendrils and shape and everything. Now, I mean, now all we really need is like either embers or glows. So I guess we can do a glow. So let's add a glow. And the glow is what's actually really going to sell the effect. So I'm going to drop that on there. Uh, you see, we already have a very uh, hot looking portal, I guess is the way I would describe it. So let's uh, expand the radius to like 250. See, we have a more uh, distilled glow. Maybe we can go down to 200. So we can have some of it in the core of the portal. And lower the threshold to 50 to get a bit more um, yellowish orange. Uh, which is the color I like. Obviously, the uh, lower the threshold, the whiter it gets. And vice versa for 100. In which case, you can't see it because it's black. And if I go like that, you can see the uh, black glow. So we're going to go halfway, 50. And it looks very like molten lava, which I like. Uh, if I was doing a blue portal, I would make it look more liquid. I mean, there's different ways to do it for different color portals. And let's lower the intensity down to like a half. I, th I think that looks pretty good. And you see now with the glow, as the uh, fractal noise changes, so does the glow. Because it's based off of the uh, contrast points on the fractal. Which is actually pretty cool. That's why I did it. So now if we ran preview, it's going to look actually really, really cool. So let's play those uh, two seconds. That looks really, really awesome. And you can still mess with the glow. You can have only like a vertical glow if that's what you want. I don't know. I'm going to go for uh, horizontal and vertical. Okay, I think that looks good. So now let's get on to part two. Part two is kind of like the ring, the outer ring, uh, where you see a bunch of the uh, tendrils and stuff. It has to be a bit um, brighter and darker at the same time, if that makes any sense. Um, so how are we going to do that? Uh, we should probably, first of all, name this to um, main portal always name your layers and just cuz let's actually just make this a uh, layer orange because that's how I roll okay we can duplicate that and we'll call this one outer ring and we're just gonna quickly let's close these effects we're quickly gonna disable these effects so we can actually see our uh, mat and what we're, what we're going to want to do with this is we're going to actually want to mask a, another layer of masking. So we only get the edge. So go to your mask. Um, and I'm going to add another ellipse mask right here. So you kind of have an ellipse within an ellipse. Bam. And you can actually just adjust the individual points of your mask so it's kind of even or not even, whatever you want. Okay, that looks good, so go to your second mask and then set it to subtract. So then you see we only have this uh, outer ring 
over here and get the molten in the center. So now what we're going to do is we're going to re-enable some of these effects. Like that. Awesome. And I'm going to change a few things between these. First of all, I'm going to take the uh, glow. So open that up. Bring up the intensity like 0.75. And bring the radius down to like 70. I mean, this is all stuff you want to play with. I want to make it a bit higher. Maybe 80. F nah, let's go 90. There you go. So you see we kind of have this like ring. And if you were actually going to use the portal and you would have a picture in the center. Uh, that's where your boundaries would be. Be pretty cool. Actually, do I have a picture? on me oh god i'm breaking the fourth wall let's close that uh do i have any pictures i do have one let's put that in here you see i have this uh let's open this up you see I, I have this picture of me uh with a flappy bird 3d model tutorial on that in the future uh, but what we can do is we can actually put it under the second ring uh let's make that a lot smaller Just scale it, and then all you really need to do is you can kind of like mask it off here. I'm going to do this really roughly. I mean, it shouldn't be that bad, but obviously if you're doing this for like some school project or your own project, please spend more time on it than that. Um, you can actually take your picture, uh, feather it a bit. Um, I would also recommend lowering the opacity to like 65 so you get some of that molten lava look over it I mean obviously you probably want a video in it but whatever uh, we're not there yet so we just added our uh, second outer ring and we changed the glow uh, you can also I wouldn't recommend this but you can actually change the uh, texturing if you go to your fractal noise if you want it to look really different you can set it to like block I mean it's probably not like the look originally from portal but in my opinion it looks pretty cool um, and then you can like change some stuff around. Uh, you don't need that much contrast, 110. Um, I think that's good. Now, obviously, if you don't want the blocks, don't use it. That's just a personal uh, preference I have. That actually looks really, really awesome. And one of the best things about adding the second ring is you, ha you have another layer of tendrils kind of in cave and going like inside. Uh, the portal, which is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Look at that. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna finish up this portal. Obviously, you can go into more detail. Actually, I'm not gonna do this in this episode, but um, you can add a orange lens flare, which I would recommend in the center and some particles, um, particles in the future, that too. So what you want to do is you want to take these two layers. And you want to pre-compose them. And I'm just going to call this uh, portal. And the reason I did that is now we can enable 3D. And we can rotate it in three dimensions. And obviously it's flat because portals are supposed to be flat. Because they're on a uh, planar surface. And then you can kind of open that up and edit it as you choose. Pretty cool looking portal. I mean, if you're really really lazy uh, you can actually just take these two layers uh, duplicate them and then take the other layers offset them and then I guess um, let me just oh you know what we could do instead what we could do instead is we can actually just duplicate the composition itself and then we can actually Go to our curves, drop a curve, and we can actually m make it bluish. I mean, this is kind of the lazy way to do it. I would recommend going in and just changing your glow settings and everything, but this is a good way to give it some color correction. I would actually recommend going into the curves a bit and giving it a bit more contrast. As you see, there's a bit of a difference between these two. I mean, whichever look uh, suits you uh, better. Just going to delete that. So there we go, guys. We have our portal, which is actually 
animated and stuff. And I'm going to show you one last thing to sell the effect. Um, this will work better if you have a picture of a wall or a video of a wall that you tracked. But um, the portal actually bulges a bit, so we're going to do that. Let's add a bulge. Okay, then what you do is you take your uh, bulge and then you put it, whoops, make sure it's selected. And then put it in the center-ish of your portal, kind of like the inner core of it, right there. And what you can do with that is you can change the uh, bulge height to like, I think it goes up to four. I'm going to pick two. And then I'm going to take the taper radius and then just decrease that down to like 45. So now we have this kind of bulge and it looks like it's coming more from the center. I mean, whatever floats your boat, guys. Whatever waves your flag. I mean, yeah. I think, I think we did a decent job on this, guys. So if we enjoyed this uh, tutorial for how to making for how to make a complex portal, um, obviously change whatever you want. Um, it's up to you guys. Hope to see some cool projects from you guys. I would also recommend adding some embers if you want to have the orange fiery portal. Uh, that's just a, an idea I'm gonna throw out there. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Um, if you didn't understand, watch the video again. And if you enjoyed, good for you. And yeah, guys, I think that's I think that's my time. And I'll see you guys on the uh, next tutorial. Peace.